Greetings and welcome to the Community Awareness Series of the Jersey City Free Public Library Annual Kwanzaa. Uh, the Community Awareness Series Kwanzaa is the longest running Kwanzaa in Hudson County. And for the last two years, last year and this year, we have not been able to come together as a community, but we will or have tried to continue this tradition. And to, today, uh, Kwanzaa 2021, we will be virtual. So Kwanzaa this year, how we will represent it, represent it is Kwanzaa real world examples. So I will light the candles uh, tonight, but then I'll ask different community leaders, uh, artists, activists to come uh, to the podium and give their understanding and application of Kwanzaa in the real world, the Ngoza Saba. So we would open with a prayer. And uh, the prayer would be to seal out racism, to uh, invoke the ancestors, to remember our humble beginnings and to keep that in mind as we move forward uh, into the future. And never has there been a time when that was more relevant than now. The last year has been so devastating for many of us. So with that, I will just open up and say, uh, you at home watching this, a moment of silence to bow your head for those we have lost. Okay, thank you. So now what we would do is we would open up with libation, uh, invoking the ancestors. So I would ask if you were here with us this evening to call out those names of the giants of the shoulders that we have stood on for all these decades. So I would say uh, Frederick Douglass, <coughs> Ida B. Wells, uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and it would go on and on. We would invoke our collective ancestors. We would ask them to be here with us this evening. Uh, as we celebrate our heritage, we celebrate our history, and we celebrate them and us moving forward together in the future, always remembering in our minds that we have to look back to go forward. So without further ado, I'm going to light our first candle, which would be the unity candle. The unity candle, candle will be the center candle, our black candle, unity. To strive for unity in our families, in our community, and in our nation, unity. And never has there been a time when uh, the oneness of Umoja, unity, has been more important. <laughs> We've been through a lot if we look at all of the trauma that has uh, befallen us in terms of deaths, in terms of uh, untimely death behind senseless acts. And now we need to carry that as a shield as we move forward. And I'm going to ask Sister Amira Ahmad to come up and recite the poem Community, because that to us represents real world what unity is all about. Sister Mir, Come, unity, come. Come, come, come. Unity, come. Community, community. We each have to come face to face, consider the time, and get in the race. 
We each have to come face to face. Consider the time and find your place. Go inside the home. Community. Go outside the door. Community. Be divided no more. Community. Go into the streets. Community. Families to unite. Community. People to greet. Community. We've got a world to remake. Community. You've got to relate. Community. Just consider the time. Community. And let all the light shine. Community. There's no turning back. Community. Community. Just stay on the track. Community. Community. And let all the light shine. Community. Community. You can be an African. Community. Community. You can be an American. Community. Community. You can be a European. Community. Community. You can be a Mexican. Community. Community. You can be a Haitian. Community. Community. You can be a Colombian. Community. Community. You can be a Puerto Rican. Community. Community. You can be a Jamaican. Community. Unity. Community. Unity. Community. Unity. Community. 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 Unity is one. Creation is one. Humanity is one. Your body is one. Let us work together as one. one. Let's we will light the candle, Kuti Chakalia, self-determination, to name ourselves, to define ourselves, to speak for ourselves, and not let anyone else name us, speak for us, or define us. Kuti Chakalia. So I'm going to have an elder, Sister Diane Williams Robinson, come up and speak to her experience using the principle Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujima. I've had the blessed fortune to remember some and then at the same time not. But I know what pulling yourself together to help another and making that another a part of you. I was on a blessed journey for about 10 years with a blessed cousin of mine whom I gave myself to the universe in committing myself to her to not allow her to be institutionalized and the day that she decided to close her eyes permanently she said, Diane, don't you even think about connecting me to a machine because that's not dignified. I said, okay. A cousin of mine, Sarah Lou Butler, born in Newburgh, North Carolina, February the 9th, 1913. She lived to a ripe age of 108. Amen. until October 28, 2021. Mm. Of her last 11 or so years, I was a part of it. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I went through a lot. But I made certain that that part of collective bargaining was to include others to assist me to keep Mama Sarah going. She was a blessing that I'm grateful to have contributed to being a part of as well. She had a home health aids, 24 seven sleepover, which is not a regular thing in New York, and especially in New Jersey. But that was obtained, I'm grateful to say. She was well nourished well entertained, she kept a sense of humor, and I can say thank you to the universe for Ujima. I feel that the force is about has said I, you did a well job. Thank you. Ujima. 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 Collective Ujima. work and responsibility. Ujima.
I didn't like the Ujima candle before because I wanted to light it for Mama Sarah. So now I will light it. So now I'll take my Kuji Chakalia candle and I will light Ujima, Collective Work and Responsibility for Mama Ujima. Sarah. Ujima, Ujima. Ujama, Cooperative Economics, building and maintaining our businesses and shops together and profiting from those relationships in the community. Ujama, Cooperative Economics. Happy Kwanzaa to everyone. Um, I've been blessed and fortunate to be put in the challenge of keeping and maintaining a business during this uh, terrible pandemic that we lived in. Um, the ability to use the principles of Kwanzaa actually rescued me. Um, Kuumba, the principle of creativity, was what I had to do in order to stay afloat in this climate. Um, I wasn't able to maintain a brick and mortar anymore because the jurisdictions of the community of the neighborhood shut down all businesses that didn't pertain to a need to be open, a necessity. Though I found that my product line at that of a necessity because of the pandemic, we were dealing with things that would, main, would maintain and keep your health and immune system. The powers that be didn't see fit because they seen other products that like clothing and other things that I sell in the community. So I had to think quickly. So I had took my products and I placed them in the back of my truck and I got on a social media tier. I started promoting a product that will build and boost your immune system known as CMOS. Now those of us in the community are very familiar with what Irish moss was. It was introduced to us from the West Indies. Uh, the people in Ireland survived during the famine off of sea moss. Hence the name Irish moss, where that came from. So this product I took, I created a show called At The Counter on Facebook. And I got hundreds and hundreds of hits I was able to take my products and get on the road, put my mask on, practice social distancing, and keep my business going while also supporting and taking care of our community. So the necessity to offer in your neighborhoods products that are beneficial to everyone in order to keep an economic afloat because we are the only ones who are gonna support our businesses. It's an unfortunate thing that until you hit a level of commercial success, that within the small communities of black neighborhoods in particular, that that's the only support that you're going to garnish. So if we're not supporting those small black businesses, they will not stay afloat, which would hence mean that your children, your grandchildren won't see themselves in the opportunity to be entrepreneur business people because they won't believe that they themselves would be supported. So I'm very thankful to my community for their support. I still stay afloat and do business well. I have an online business. Um, the name of my brand is Selfism for our responsibilities to ourselves. And I learned this by naming myself from the principles of Kwanzaa. So Selfism is my brand, shopselfism.com. I can be reached. I also can be reached for pickup and delivery by my phone number. So Without further ado, I would like to take this time out to again thank my ancestors, my parents. So I lost my father during this um, pandemic. He also lived till he was the age of 91. And I'm so grateful for, um, for him because he stayed supportive in my endeavors to grow and to grow as a man and, and a business in this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we go to the principle of Nia purpose, to make it our collective vocation, the restoring of our people to a place of tradition, a place of honor, and a place of dig dignity, uh, near purpose. And we will have Kim uh, Sarara 
who is a member of the Urban League, uh, speak to us about purpose in her work? Nia, purpose. When I think of Nia, I think of my why. Why am I here? It makes one think, what is my purpose to myself and how I am going to deposit positivity in my community? I would suggest that if the NIA principle has any importance to you, then we should consider exploring and discovering our purpose. We can start by an individual cleanse, by striving to master the art of love, peace, patience, humility, self-determination, kindness, forgiveness, wisdom, knowledge, for us to understand each other. These are priceless attributes that we must and have to, it's detrimental in our community, in our society, as a world, as a nation, to distribute these gems and to continue to teach, learn, and develop as a collective so that we can organize, unify, and build the greater good as a whole. And with the, the type of work that I do, it involves nothing but community. Threading one organization, one business, one person, all together as a collective so that we can create a better good. So I would say, unless if you just want to exist or just be stagnated or still, then Nia would not be a principle to your liking. However, if we have a conscious of positivity and change, I would suggest that we all latch on to Nia. Thank you. So we like now uh, the principle of Kuwamba, creativity. Kuwamba, creativity. To do as much as we can in any way that we can to make our community more beneficial and more beautiful than when we inherited. I think of uh, the environment. Uh, environmentally, we are challenged also. We really have to understand that the earth is all we have. We have to take care of it because there ain't nowhere else to go. So, Kuwamba, do as much as we can in any way that we can to make this a more healthier, a more cleaner, and a more positive environment. Kuwamba. Our last principle, faith. And I will have Brother Jerome Choice come up, but I'm going to light the candle first. Faith. To believe in our hearts and minds, in our ancestors, our leaders, our <laughs> teachers, and the righteousness of our struggle. Imani, faith. Happy Kwanzaa, everyone. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about faith because it's very important in our struggle as a people. We have come this far by faith. When the original Africans came in this country in 1690, they were stripped of everything. Their family, their land, and their home. But one thing they did have was faith. And it's that faith that has sustained us. And it's that faith that gives us the hope and the strength to endure the past and the present struggles of this life. This faith has kept us and helped us to survive the Middle Passage, slavery, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, sharecropping, lynching, segregation, poverty, and the killing of innocent black lives. Our ancestors and our parents and our leaders demonstrated this faith and they instilled in us the love, the pride, the resilience, and the tenacity to fight for a better life and justice. These qualities that they gave us, gave us the confidence and the self-esteem to continue the struggle to 
for the victory of justice and a better life for all. And that is why we honor and respect and believe in our ancestors, our parents, and our leaders for the righteousness and the victory of our struggles. Ashe. Ashe. And I would like to sh shout out to some of our leaders from Harriet Tudman to Sojourner Truth to Fredericks Douglas to Ida B. Wells to Thurgood Marshall to W.E.B. Du Bois to Shirley Caesar, Ch Shirley Sism and to Martin Luther King and our President Obama. And I thank you and Happy New Year. So this would entail the candle lighting uh, ceremony for Kwanzaa. Uh, and what you see represented here now is the Ngoza Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So I'm just going to speak a little to uh, some of the things that we have on our table right now. So the Kwanzaa really represents uh, a harvest, uh, the coming together after a collective uh, work and responsibility of uh, farming, agriculture, because we are an agricultural people by tradition. And some of the things that uh, we should be on your table is uh, fruit, vegetable, corn. Corn is very important because it represents the children. And even if you don't have children, you should have at least one ear of corn because no matter what, we're, we're parents and by community extended parents. So we should always be looking to help uh, the younger ones who maybe don't know to do the right thing. Uh, we also have um, statues that represent our creativity. Uh, you have uh, cloths that are African in tradition. Um, you have the principles, uh, the candles, what they represent, the red, black, and green, uh, the struggle, the land, and the people, and you have the Kinara. The Kinara is the extension of the history. Uh, the Kinara really represents the spirit of the ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. So these are the, oh, of course you have the uh, um, unity cup. Um, this is uh, to pour libation. Um, and the Kwanzaa setup can be as elaborate or as minimal as you like it. It really does not have to be any one or the other. It's how you interpreted it. But these are the symbols, the kinara, the candles, the uh, displaying of the harvest, the cloths, the red, the black, the green, uh, the unity cup, and uh, symbols of creativity. So Habari Ghani, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, and may we all grow stronger and healthier in the new year. Ashe, Ashe. We are here at a Spectrum's African uh, house, and they will be this demonstrating Kuwamba, creativity, world, real world experience. We will have three uh, pieces. It'll be the youth, the young adult, and the master dancers, and uh, with it, uh, the director, Zula Tifa, will be speaking on the costume and uh, what the dance means. So without further ado, uh, I give you Spectrums Africans.
principle itself, it means more than just doing something manually in your house, in your school, in your, in your work. You have to really have this long vision about how you want to be creative, how you want to be known, what do you want to be known for, what is it you want people to be able to say about you, what you contributed. So Kaoma doesn't mean an article of clothing, it doesn't mean a piece of jewelry, it doesn't mean how you walk down the street, your swagger, it means all of that together. We're coming, we're going to do this, come and gather. So it'll be a small Paley Tum Tum, not very long, but before we do the Paley Tum Tum, I want Kazuri to give him one or two hand patterns, and he, and he repeated, another hand pattern, and he repeated. And then Kinar can have the accompaniment in the back of the hand pattern, okay, so that we can see how we put it together. All right, that sound, sound like a plan? So he's going to give you a hand pattern, and you're, and you're going to repeat it, okay? Then he'll give you another one, and you'll repeat it. And then we'll do the, the Paley Tum Tum, and then that will show how you created something from one or two or three different hand patterns. But before we do that, Kinar, thank you, Zoe, can you please elicit the different parts of the drum and the hand patterns, like what they're called? Okay? Okay? Well, what they're called. Okay, you have tone slap. So that everybody can know we're just not beating the drums. Okay? So before he gives you the hand pattern, just elicit there on the drum. Okay, the different hand patterns that you try to get from the drum, the tonation from the drum. Good afternoon, my name is Kakayu. Today we will be doing a dance called Makuru. It's a celebration dance. What I'll be doing is, I'll be doing this step first. The young ladies behind me, which is Kamaya, Kazaya, Kaasia, Tahida, and Karanda. They will demonstrate the step. After I do it, we'll put the step together so you guys will know exactly what it should look like with the drums being played in the break.
This dance is called Makaru, and it's a celebration dance. It's a celebration. It's high energy, if you notice the steps. Yes. Everything is high energy. So West African dance, done in Mali for celebration. Okay. Yep. Believe it or not, the Jimbe drum originally comes from Guinea. Um, they play it in Senegal, Guinea, Gambia, and Mali. The Saba drum orchestration comes from Senegal. And what happened was, believe it or not, the Jim Bay drum was scorned. They didn't want you, anyone to play it. It was knocked down and it was put to the side because they say it would bring, bring back too much possession or spirits, okay? So for a long time, a lot of people did not accept the sound of the Jim Bay. It's a very demanding drum. It's a very wholesome drum. It's a very powerful drum. And the original Jim Bay orchestra had the balafone, the quarter, and one or two of these drums. You'll have the June June, the Kankane, or the Songba. But the Jimbe came in last because of its quality of command and demand. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna step it up with a little bit more of um, the aggressive movement and older women in the class and a little bit more stringent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak just a little bit on the technique and form, what's important. Younger people want, they want to dance, they want to move, they want to be seen. But the intricate steps need to be perfected because they fit inside the music. So fitting inside the music is one thing, and execution doing the music is another thing. So hopefully, I don't know if we can see foot pattern, but we're going to take, we'll take one or two steps and then eventually that'll be put also in a choreographed piece. But unlike the piece that was here, we have we have a little bit more space and so they may be able to do, I don't know, if they want to do, um, they're going to do cultivar. Um, they may want to have a solo piece, okay, if they feel up to it, okay, just, just so you can see the intricacies of individual dancers. Okay, so I'm Kadama, and the name of the dance that you're getting ready to see is called Kotiba, and it's actually a dance that resembles uh, the snail, the movement of a snail, and the uh, purpose of the dance is really to know that although we go through life with trials and tribulations carrying heavy loads, like a snail carrying a heavy load slowly, going on its path, decisions have to be made, mistakes can be made, but those, those, those snails cannot uh, let go of the load that they're carrying. So this dance and this, the movements resemble those of a snail. Um, and while we're trying to go through our own trials and tribulations and figuring things out, um, that's what this dance is similar to.
of Columba, creativity, to do as much as we can in any way that we can to make our community more beautiful, more creative, uh, develop of our talent, and to be able to pass that on. Columba. And thank you again for the Jersey City cooperation with Miller Branch Library. This wonderful videographer, Barbara, Brother Daoud, and Samora, always in the background, in the back scenes, putting it together. I thank my family for tolerating me, throwing things together, and putting them in the middle of what they consider to be madness. But we still got it done. Uh, Kaumba is creativity. And I hope that we can learn how to turn on a dime.